Καλημέρα και από εμένα. Good morning uh, from uh, UK. Uh, uh, I, first of all, I want uh, to thank the committee for inviting me to talk uh, on uh, neonatal PDA standing uh, as an alternative to blood locked out uh, dosing signs. Uh, I have no disclosures. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, some history. Uh, what uh, we know till now, uh, that in 1992, Gibbs and uh, his colleagues first presented uh, an uh, implantation of ductal standing in uh, two babies, a 3.5 and 4 millimeter coronary stent. One of the patients uh, uh, got uh, two stents uh, in uh, the ducts. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this baby uh, didn't have a favorable uh, outcome. So since then uh, started uh, that uh, new technique. Uh, later uh, on, uh, what trigger out minds in order to go to uh, this technique as an alternative to BT sons? Uh, as uh, you can see, uh we have uh, here the outcomes uh, from the national registry of uh, uk which was uh, uh, presented by uh, doru bandu and uh, what we know systemic to pulmonary sounds generally are decreased uh, the last decade uh, in uh, uk exemption is uh, the univentricle uh, uh, palliations uh, mortality, uh, the last decade uh, has increased from 5.1 to 9.8. And uh, the 15-year uh, follow-up mortality was around uh, 14%, with some interventions around 18%, and a survival rate of uh, 68% of uh, the basis. Um, Another study from uh, a uh, well-known international center in Toronto uh, has also shown uh, more or less the same results uh, for blood of thousand sons. And as we can see, it is about in uh, mortality of 20%, uh, with uh, a uh, re-intervention uh, for uh, the stents reoperations around uh, 12% and catheter interventions around 8%. Uh, Multi-center studies that uh, uh, they were done in the United States from uh, 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 four uh, centers, uh, uh, and it was reported in Circulation 2018 uh, by GLADS. Uh, they have shown that uh, when they have done the adjusted uh, um, uh, um, um, risk factors, uh, that uh, death and urgent interventions did not differ between the two uh, uh, techniques, uh, ductal standing and blood loctosis sands. On the contrary, what we have seen is that uh, ductal stand uh, was uh, uh, better uh, slightly from uh, uh, the side of complications uh, the length of stay in uh, ICU, uh, we have uh, less uh, diuretics uh, after the procedure, which means uh, less overcirculation for the patients. And uh, of, uh, at the end, a larger and more symmetrical growth of the pulmonary arteries. More or less in the same line, it is uh, the results again from the uh, UK, uh, a study that it was uh, published in 2018 by James Benton and uh, the rest of the colleagues. Uh, they have shown that uh, ductal standing uh, is uh, 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 preferable over using uh, modified uh, blood of thousand uh, sand. Uh, according to survival, to uh, uh, procedural uh, hemodynamics, to shorter stay of uh, intensive care unit and uh, hospital stay, but uh, they need a lot of uh, reinterventions and they have to be done in centers that uh, they have the expertise. Uh, a meta-analysis which was uh, published by uh, Lee uh, uh, in uh, uh, BMC uh, Cardiovascular Disorders 2021, um, uh, they have uh, uh, shown that uh, more or less arterial ductal stent appears 
not to be inferior from the uh, BT sons uh, according to uh, complications, mortality, again, a length of stay in hospitals, pulmonary artery growth. So um, knowing uh, uh, these uh, things from uh, the literature, what we can conclude is that uh, neonatal PDA standing could be as, um, an, uh, one palliative uh, technique for selected patients as an alternative to uh, modified uh, to blood of thousand signs. Now let's go further down a little bit about ductal standing uh, uh, technique. Um, what we have to know before we proceed to, to that, we have to know anatomy, we have to know uh, the uh, morphology and in that way to make the stratification how we are going to proceed. Two nice studies that so we have one from uh, Texas, uh, United States, and the other from Europe. More or less, they have gone through the different patients that they are, um, um, we are undertaking for a ductal stand, and they have seen that uh, we can uh, group the patients uh, in uh, more or less three uh, uh, main groups. Uh, they want that they have a straight duct, uh, uh, ducts uh, that they, they are with one uh, turn, and ducts that they have more than one turn. Of course, important is to know where the duct is coming out, uh, and uh, duct can come out from descending aorta, uh, underside of uh, uh, the arch, uh, more or less vertical, or from uh, truncal uh, vessels. Uh, more in the same uh, line, it was uh, also the European uh, group uh, that they have shown uh, for different pathologies uh, what is the type of the uh, of the duct. Uh, here we can uh, see uh, uh, some uh, uh, examples of uh, different uh, uh, ducts. Uh, ducts. Uh, in the first one, it is an S-shaped duct. Uh, in the second one, it is uh, a C-shaped uh, duct uh, there. And in the uh, last one, uh, again, it is a C-shaped uh, duct uh, that uh, it has also a spasm just before the entering pulmonary uh, position. Uh, here we have another example of a double, a double implant left ventricle with a discordant uh, ventricular arterial uh, connection with a large PSD and uh, outflow tract obstruction of the right ventricle. And so we have a straight duct coming from descending aorta. This injection is in a lateral view with a pigtail catheter retrogradely in uh, uh, descending aorta. And as we can see, there is a spasm of the ducts uh, uh, just before entering the uh, pulmonary arteries. Uh, what other modalities we have uh, to show apart from echo, of course, which is the first modality that we use in order to uh, delineate the anatomy of a patient. So uh, it is uh, the CT angiographies that uh, uh, it is a useful uh, modality to see the anatomy and to see the morphology of the duct. And there is uh, uh, a nice report in pediatric radiology uh, in 2020, again from Texas, United States, that they have concluded that using the CT and geographies, they could prepare uh, the intervention better and more or less uh, uh, they have the same uh, measurements according to length and to size of the ducts uh, uh, with the one that we can get inside the cardiac catheter. Uh, here you can see a nice example of uh, a, a CT and geography reconstruction. Uh, and as I rotate that, uh, uh, you can see that uh, we have the duct, which is gone from the other side of descending. Uh, our turns, uh, entering uh, in the uh, roof of the pulmonary arteries. Another uh, example of an one turn duct, uh, uh, you can see that uh, the duct is uh, coming and uh, entering uh, uh, in a C shape, uh, the uh, roof of the pulmonary arteries. Uh, from this side, it is the anterior. Uh, aspects. Uh, uh, here is the superior vena cava and the left pulmonary artery is coming uh, in uh, that uh, way. 
so um, where the duct is in setting, uh, it is important in order again to uh, know uh, if we have to proceed or we have to be more cautious uh, how we will uh, move forward. So uh, we can group uh, the ducts that uh, they are coming uh, underside of the arch and they are extending more to the left pulmonary artery. And these anatomies usually are the tetralogy of allos with pulmonary atresia or the complex uh, uh, transposition of great arteries or corrected transposition in single ventricles. And uh, ducts that usually they come from descending aorta, they have a more straight uh, trajectory and they are entering uh, uh, smoothly in the main pulmonary artery. They are ducts that uh, we can see by tricuspid atresias, Epstein anomalies. Uh, simple transpositions and pulmonary atresia intact ventricular septums. Of course, this uh, is not an absolute, so you can have also different uh, uh, morphologies. Here we can see another example from a CTA, and uh, as this uh, uh, turns, uh, you can see that uh, there is a duct that is coming from uh, um, and inserting uh, to the roof of the pulmonary arteries. Uh, it's coming from descending aorta and is entering there the roof of the pulmonary arteries in a double inlet uh, left ventricle with transposition. Which patients uh, we would say that it is better to avoid placing uh, a duct? Uh, um, uh, from the literature and from our experience, we think that uh, ducts, they are uh, more than once uh, turned. It is better to uh, leave them uh, for a BT sand uh, or ducts that they are not constricting, although we have stopped uh, prostaglandin infusions uh, earlier or they are inserting in left pulmonary arteries and uh, uh, they are causing the so-called LPA coarctation. And of course, for babies below two kilograms, that's uh, unfortunately, we do not have the material in order to uh, go beyond uh, uh, below that uh, body weight. Approaches and accesses, uh, it is uh, also uh, evolving with time. We uh, can do um, and uh, uh, from descending uh, aorta, uh, we uh, ducks that they are coming from descending aorta and usually they are not approaches. We prefer to go from un um, undergrade from the uh, femoral vein. Uh, through the right ventricle, through the VSD, in ascending aorta, and uh, try to come uh, undergrade in the duct, or from uh, a retrograde uh, approach uh, through the descending uh, uh, artery uh, uh, aorta. And so ducts that uh, they are coming from the underside of the arch, so we uh, have lately started to use the accesses from the neck vessels, either the carotid uh, artery or the uh, left subclavian, sometimes even the nominate uh, uh, trunk. And uh, as we know, uh, earlier years, we need a cut down to do that. But lately, with the uh, sono guidance, ultrasound guidance, this access is uh, uh, approachable. We have a very nice study again from uh, uh, two centers uh, um, from uh, Texas uh, in collaboration with uh, the Dublin uh, center that uh, they have shown that uh, an uh, axillary access is it is safe and uh, we have complications that they reach up to 15 percent uh, but they are minor complications and they do not compromise the perfusion of uh, uh, significant organs like the brain or uh, the shoulders or the arms uh, material that we are using, it is uh, bare metal stents or drug eluding stents. It is important to know uh, to have different sizes, different uh, lengths, and usually uh, we follow the rule of the BT sands according to the body weight of the baby. And uh, we like to play uh, to, uh, to place uh, four millimeter uh, uh, stands uh, by kids between three and three point five kilograms. And when they are more than uh, four kilograms, we like to place uh, a bigger stands of uh, uh, four point five. 
And this is uh, why we are limited uh, from the material, from the insertion sheath uh, that we can use. We always have to, to cover the whole length of uh, uh, the duct. And uh, when we uh, use more than one, we are using the telescopic uh, technique. Uh, here we have uh, a nice study that uh, from the Toronto group again, which has shown that uh, uh, the drug eluting stents, the, the uh, serolimus uh, uh, um, uh, immunosuppressive, uh, it is increased uh, by neonates. Uh, it is 20 times more than it is in uh, children and in adults. But on the, uh, this had no impact uh, in uh, 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 the tissues around or even to the health of the babies uh, after growing. And uh, we had uh, a significant advantage uh, with uh, uh, less interventions and uh, less uh, decrease of the, of the size of the lumen of the stent because of intima proliferation. Uh, some tips uh, according to uh, the uh, technique. Uh, we like to test uh, the previous stage before we uh, go for the uh, intervention if the duct is uh, uh, constricting or not. So, and we do that by reducing a little bit of uh, the prostate infusion and checking with uh, echocardiography the size of the duct and uh, clinically the saturations of the, of, uh, the baby. Uh, we like to keep uh, before the procedures uh, saturations around 70s and to have lactates in the norm range. Uh, this is important. Of course, if we have an overcirculation, which means uh, saturations more than 85, then uh, we stop for uh, uh six to eight hours prior to the procedure. And the previous nights, uh, we uh, like to reduce prostaglandin to the less uh, uh, minimal uh, acting dose, around uh, three to five nanograms per kilogram per minute. We always give antibiotics. During the procedure, you have to have an uh, ACT above 200. That's why we are giving, uh, according to the size, 75 to 100 units of uh, uh, body weight uh, heparin. We like to use floppy wires, uh, uh, preferential the choice PT and the BMW. Uh, we prefer to have the body wire technique and uh, whenever we place the wire in uh, position, we have to choose which is the wire that we are going to deliver the stand. And uh, in order to stabilize that, uh, we usually uh, do the technique that uh, uh, we have learned from the doubling uh, team uh, that uh, they are turning three to four times clockwise uh, the, the wire in order to be more stable. Here we have uh, some examples of uh, trying to place the uh, body wire in position. And uh, as you can see, we find we have all, already one wire in the right lung, uh, the other is going to the left lung. Uh, in the second uh, upper right uh, view, we have already the standing position. We have chosen to do uh, do it that to the to the right pulmonary uh, wire, the opening of the stents, and uh, this is another uh, 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 example of uh, the stenting position with two wires in the same uh, pulmonary artery. Uh, in these uh, uh, images, we can see uh, the uh, technique of uh, the telescopic technique. We have already implanted one uh, stent in the duct distally, and uh, the second is uh, stent is come in a telescopic manner uh, from descending aorta, and in order to cover the whole length. And uh, in the right view, we can see the cover of the whole length of the ducts and a good perfusion of the pulmonary arteries. Uh, something uh, uh, useful sometimes it is to have a prograde catheter from Terumo in uh, our armamentarium in cath lab and uh, to have a stiff coronary wires, either the Ironman uh, coronary wire or the through wave wire 0.14 inches. 
Uh, this was they help to straighten uh, very tortuous tax uh, projections that we are using depends uh, where the duct is coming out, if it is a left arch, right arch, uh, if it is uh, vertical coming from the undersides uh, and uh, left arch, uh, we usually prefer to have an LA or cranial view. Uh, and uh, if it is a right, more right uh, 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 oblique views. Uh, we use usually the Zion Serum uh, drug eluting stents to which uh, they have ever olimus. And so this is uh, because the, the, thick, uh, the thickness of the uh, struts it is around uh, 81 micrometers which is strong enough uh, and in the same time uh, flexible in, uh, enough in order to overcome curves of uh, the duct. Uh, I would recommend not to go to a newer stand, that uh, coronary stand, that they are less than this thickness because uh, uh, we have uh, ex uh, experienced that these, they are not distensible in the future and so they can easily snap and cause problems. Uh, we, um, by the time that you decide to take uh, the wire off, always try uh, uh, to, to bring the wire in a straight manner. And if the wire is bent, then to use a prograde catheter to take the wires out. And we always uh, uh, convey the patients on uh, uh, heparin uh, in order to have a three-fold uh, uh, APTT. And so we start uh, aspirin after extubating the child and starting uh, feeding the child uh, and, the do and so the doses are between three and five for aspirin clopidogrel 0.2 milligram per kilogram. Uh, here we see some uh, examples again from uh, the uh, left subclavian artery already one uh, 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 stand is uh, in place and the second stand is coming in position. We see both pulmonary arteries and in the right uh, lower uh, view, we can see how we retrieve the wire straight, uh, straighten the wire in order to take it back and not to have any uh, funny uh, complication by retrieving out and uh, migrating the stents out of the duct. Uh, complication rate, of course, we have complications. They are reaching in different studies up to 13%. They can be uh, all the kind of complications from dissections uh, and partial sleep, especially the femoral, they have this problem, femoral arteries. Uh, ductal spasm, so uh, there you have to uh, react uh, uh, aggressively with uh, giving, uh, again, uh, prostaglandins and try to retrieve the wire in order not to, uh, to trigger the spasm. Uh, ductal dissections, they are reported, especially in Malaysia uh, a group uh, who they have a big experience. They have reported many cases of that. Uh, stent thrombosis, uh, stent migration, jailing of the pulmonary arteries, and we have interventions up to 40%, as was uh, uh, also reported in the uh, NICO review earlier. Uh, in this uh, uh, image, I apologize for the uh, quality. Um, uh, we can see that uh, we have an, uh, uh, stent, two stents in position. And as you can see, uh, we have uh, jailed the left pulmonary artery and we have already an, uh, caused a narrowing of uh, the right pulmonary artery. By this child, we had to uh, re-intervene later in uh, uh, later days in order to uh, open the right pulmonary uh, artery uh, by going through the struts. And uh, in the right lower image, we see a jailing of uh, the left pulmonary artery by placing uh, uh, the uh, stents uh, towards the right pulmonary artery because we have a constriction of the right pulmonary artery in that uh, way. Uh, here, we didn't intervene as we had a very good flow to both arteries, so we have a good growth of pulmonary arteries. 
Uh, as uh, I have mentioned in uh, uh, our registry in UK, we have seen that the 30 day mortality rate is up to 5%, and uh, we have ECMO runs uh, of approximately 2.5%. And uh, uh, pre repair deaths uh, uh, 9%. Uh, I would like to share a case with you that uh, we have done uh, this uh, baby 2.5 kilogram tetralogy by open monetary arteries. When we started the case, we had an ACT of uh, 222. We, cho we have chosen a Zion Sarah, as I said, Dagalun extends 3.5 by 18. And in the first image uh, to the left, uh, you can see that uh, there is uh, 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 the duct is going more to the left uh, uh, pulmonary artery. It has a tortuous uh, uh, right pulmonary artery. Um, the second uh, in the uh, right lower image, uh, we can see the, the stand in position, a long stand uh, in uh, position. Uh, after placing the stand, what we have seen is that uh, there is no good opacification of uh, the stand and we have lost uh, the left pulmonary artery. And because of that, we have commenced the second dose of uh, uh, heparin, uh, try to have an ACT above uh, 230. We have retrieved uh, the, uh, the wires. Uh, this was our uh, mistake. Uh, and so we have uh, already called the team for uh, ECMO support, uh, giving bolses uh, and uh, uh, heparin uh, infusions. Uh, uh, we are starting to see that the left pulmonary artery is still there, and we have an, a gap of feeling in the right pulmonary artery later in the same, uh, a little bit later in the cath lab, we see that we have the whole right pulmonary artery and uh, uh, the left is missing. And after three days approximately, what we can see that we have a good ductal flow and uh, a good flow to the left pulmonary artery and to the right pulmonary artery by echo. Uh, message uh, to take home is that uh, ductal stand is an alternative uh, technique. Uh, straight uh, and one turn ducts, they have a minimal risk uh, for complications. So, more uh, tortuous ducts, they have a higher risk of uh, complications. Uh, uh, we have complications, of course, uh, we know that. And so we have a lot of uh, uh, re-interventions. And that uh, 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 ductal stand is superior to uh, length of stay in ICU uh, and in hospital. And we have a symmetrical and good growth of the pulmonary arteries. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Marino, this was a, an amazing uh, talk with lots of case, uh, cases, uh, very educational for us all. Um, thank you for sharing your experience and all the data de de detailing the ductal standing. Um, if, do we have any questions from the audience or online? We've got a very large number of people watching us online at the moment, around 150 people. So do come forward and ask us questions in the chat. Um, if not, I wanted to ask you a little bit about ductal stenting um, and the thrombosis regarding that. You showed us a case where you lost the LPA. We've had a similar case that I'm going to present at the APC this year. And uh, going back, uh, when we had this complication, we looked at the very initial angiograms. They, are, they seem very similar to your case. The peripheral vasculature of the left lung was very small, and probably the vascular resistance of that ipsilateral lung was very high. And so looking back, and as a take-home message, I wanted to ask you, would you, uh, from now on, or should we, when we choose to do ductal standing, and we are in fear of ductal stand thrombosis, should we be looking at the peripheral vasculature at all? 
and predict whether there, w there will be complications? Uh, the fact is that uh, by neonates, uh, uh, when uh, we want uh, to see the peripheral pulmonary arteries, uh, we usually we proceed with uh, CTA angiographies. And now you know better, you have better experience than me on this modality. Uh, we have a significant problem in order to have clear view of the peripheral pulmonary arteries. Uh, yes, we can see the, the, the main branches and uh, the uh, bifurcation, trifurcation of the pulmonary arteries distantly, but uh, uh, you cannot uh, see what is uh, uh, the uh, uh, arborization of uh, the pulmonary arteries uh, intraparenchymal. Uh, it would be nice to have this in order to predict, uh, uh, but uh, I believe that uh, the most important thing is the way that uh, the duct coming to the pulmonary arteries, uh, if it is struggling one of the pulmonary arteries, and uh, by uh, placing uh, a stent in uh, this soft tissue, uh, maybe uh, what we have done in our case, uh, we have uh, more or less occluded for some time the perfusion there and we have caused the clot. Thank you very much. And could I um, uh, have uh, Professor Anderson uh, to give us his uh, personal views on this uh, issue? I know at the Evelina, and that's where I learned to do ductal stenting. We were, uh, we were preferring to do a, a, a stent in the duct rather than BTS. But how are things now, David? Well, thank you. Um, I'm not so involved these days, having stopped operating. But uh, I think that it uh, has, has a role. Um, and, uh, you know, the speaker has identified those cases that are favorable and those that are not. Uh, as I was listening, uh, I became aware of the, when we deal with ducts surgically in the context of a coarctation interruption, transposition, or the primitive duct, they're virtually always straight. Uh, and the ducts in uh, obstructive lesions like pulmonary trees, tetralogy, et cetera, have this tendency to be uh, curved uh, or corkscrew and uh, that I think is a very important uh, uh, factor. What I was going to ask the speaker is whether or not there are any strategies to prevent ductal spasm because in the context of something like pulmonary atresia, ductal spasm of course is a serious life-threatening event. Uh, thank you for your question uh, Professor Adelson. Um, what uh, uh, try to manipulate as uh, less as you can with your wires or with your uh, catheters. That's why uh, I find very interesting the technique that uh, was described in many centers with the prograde catheter, which is a micro catheter, uh, taking the advantage to have this catheter in our cath lab uh, from the uh, neuro uh, surgeons and neurologists, the in uh, intervention neurologists. Uh, this is a very soft uh, catheter. It is easy to take the curves. You don't uh, go with uh, a, a wire uh, in order to manipulate in curves. And the fact is where you can have the spasm, where you have too many curves. So uh, if you avoid to, to, to stand the two curves, ducts, and uh, this is what uh, lately we're doing, uh, then I don't uh, see why you have this part of that. And that, that's precisely right. And um, so, Marino, we have a question from the audience. They are asking, which would be, in conclusion, which patient you would recommend straight for surgery and you would not consider ductal stenting? That's uh, that they have two or more stents, you have to be aware you are going to, to have uh, critical problems. And if the patient is above 2.5 kilograms, then I would uh, recommend direct for a VT sound. Uh, or uh, um, if um, uh, it is um, uh, uh, favor the anatomy uh, for direct uh, uh, outflow track uh, parts, uh, 
uh, or for uh, LVOT standing. Uh, I wouldn't go with uh, too many cares uh, to do uh, a ductile standing nowadays, uh, knowing the complications, knowing that uh, significant uh, morbidity that falls after that. Great. So I think straight. So straight ducks. In conclusion, that uh, yes, we predict a simpler procedure: torches ducts or ducts that have no restriction. Massive torches ducts are probably not for our interventional cath lab. I also wanted to add something that we see occasionally, but it's very important when we have disconnected pulmonary arteries, and one pulmonary artery is fed by a duct. Uh, in this case, usually the LPA, but it can be the RPA as well. So in disconnected pulmonary arteries, it is uh, our favorable procedure to stent the duct, maintain perfusion to the lung that is perfused by the duct, and at a later stage when the vessel is bigger and the child is bigger, then the surgeon can reconnect the disconnected PA into the MPA, you would agree with that? Yes, exactly. Okay. Totally agree with you. Good. And Dr. Komnou has a question too. Καλημέρα και από μένα και καλωσορίσατε. Χαίρομαι που σε βλέπω, Μαρίνο. Και συγχαρητήρια, πολύ ωραία ομιλία. I would like to ask, uh, is it a general practice to, uh, to use uh, CT for, uh, uh, for uh, delineating the anatomy of the duct, uh, or is it uh, something that uh, could be avoided uh, uh, because of um, uh, radiation for the baby? Uh, we know lately that uh, the uh, protocol that we are using for CTA, they have a uh, very minimal exposure to radiation. And uh, that's why this is a uh, more or less constant uh, uh, referral uh, after uh, first diagnosis with discussion in our JCC meeting. And uh, before we proceed, we always have a CTA. Uh, this helps you a lot in order to know if you have to go directly uh, to, to go from the neck, how you will place the baby uh, in the cath lab, if you will place in a different uh, uh, posture in the cath lab, uh, so the head towards the uh, south and the, the legs towards the north, uh, in that way in order to have the full length of the cath lab. This helps you a lot for these uh, procedures. That, that is great. We, we also shifted uh, towards that direction. We used to do neonatal MRIs that are great, but we know that neonatal MRIs can take a long time and uh, for very small neonates, they have to be in the uh, MRI suite for a long time. So we have also shifted to CTs, CT angiograms in the neonates. We reduced the radiation with the specific techniques that pediatric radiologists use these days, but we need to be aware that we have to have a multi-slice CT, at least 128 dual phase CT. We cannot do this investigation in the old scanners of 64 slices, etc. So that has been a very fantastic uh, session and talk, uh, very provocative for questions and answers. But we have to move, I think, right? Marino, thank you very much. Thank um, you a lot. Thank